due to a combination of the fears, frustration, and uncertainty with our current political landscape in conjunction to energetic shifts, spiritual and psychological warfare, many are experiencing unprecedented levels of anxiety, anger, frustration, and agitation. In this section of this presentation, I will provide five effective tips and advice on what we can specifically do to help maintain our cool and calmness when in the face of hot and emotionally charged encounters and moments. Number one, breathe. Taking deep breaths is one of the most effective methods in this regard because doing so will cause your muscles to relax, oxygen levels increases, blood pressure lowered, and healthy endorphins are released. The moment you sense, feel, or see something that triggers a negative response, immediately shift your attention away from the situation. Take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Continue to take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth until you feel more relaxed and unfazed. Number two, refuse and defuse. The beauty about situations that may get our blood boiling is that we don't have to consent to them. Hence, no response, no charge. All is required in this regard is to immediately turn our attention away from the disturbing situation and state to yourself, I do not consent. By stating the affirmation, you are in essence commanding the situation to leave your existence immediately. Three, focus on kindness. Now, I learned this great tip from watching my sister, especially in situations where she found herself being challenged by way of lackluster or not so good customer service in department stores and the likes. Just simply smile back at the person and situation and say something complimentary, kind and endearing. An opposite response to what is being given often works like a charm. Number four, walk away. Now, of course, this one is pretty self-explanatory, but can definitely pose to be more difficult to put into practice and said, when and if you find yourself in a situation that is rowling you into a state of combativeness or irritation, you have every right to refuse to give justification to the situation by simply turning away and walking in the opposite direction. Again, easier said than done, but discipline the self to just do it. Number five, aromatherapy and soft music. One of the best ways to keep a cool and level head is to stay ahead of any potential hot spots or situations. Simply create a small space or sanctuary for you to simply sit back and relax as you play the soft music of your choice. Freshly scented incense or heated oil co-creates a peaceful and heavenly like state. Oh yes. Additionally, aromatherapy and soft high vibratory music will reduce anxiety, ease depression, boost energy levels, speed up any healing that you may need, eliminate headaches, boost cognitive performance, induce sleep, strengthen the immune system, reduce pain, improve digestion, and increase circulation. Just imagine a double boost that one would receive if we routinely and or periodically use both methods together. Now, I will provide eight powerfully effective tips that we can do to maintain mental, physical, and metaphysical balance in these perilous times. Number one, clean house. Get rid of letters, papers, emails, furniture, clothes, shoes, or any tangible items connected to experiences and memories tied to trauma, gloominess, failed relationships, heartache, fear, sadness, defeatism, or depression. All things hold energy and emotions, and for obvious reasons, there's no need to hold on to things that are aiding in holding your vibrations down. Number two, rearrange or remodel your dwellings. Now, most of us spend more time in our homes than any other place on earth. And what better place to change when we are ready for change than this extension of ourselves? I have found that rearranging furniture and even repainting walls to a vibrant color helps to invigorate and generate wonderful energy streams and space for our best intention to manifest. Upon making this change, you may feel an instant sense of order. 
You may feel lively or balanced and vibrant in your state of mind and beingness. Number three, let go of people and situations that are not reflecting the change you are or want to be. Now, this one is definitely one of the hardest things for many of us to do, especially when one has deep emotional ties and connections to a particular person, place or thing. The reality is that when and if we hold on to such things, they affect and infect us in ways that we are not always consciously aware of. If such persons or matter is a relative or job that you cannot afford to break away from right away, plan and execute a transition and be determined and consistent. Number four, give yourself a makeover. It is a proven fact that when a person allow themselves a makeover that is favorable to them, he or she is far more likely to project a sense of favor and attract energies that could reinforce change and elevate their self-confidence. Yes, we all know that change comes from within, but I have learned that a positive external self-image can ignite the core to strive for a matching internal self. Number five, put yourself first. Now, some people will say that putting yourself first is one of the most selfish things that one can do, but I disagree. If we are not pampering, loving, and giving honor to ourselves first and foremost, how can we be of any good to show and do any of this in a healthy and balanced way for others? When you get a paycheck, for example, pay yourself first instead of some bills, even if it's but a few bucks. Consider how every situation you are asked to be a part of or attract with your best interest in mind first and foremost. Number six, help others who genuinely want help. When we help others who genuinely want the help, we are essentially co-creating and reinforcing energy streams under the wings of the law of attraction. The help that we give to one who is genuine will ultimately be the help cause and effect, remember that, we will inevitably attract to our genuine selves. You see? Number seven, do not restrict your authentic self-expression. Do and be you. Now, this is for those down low misfits out there. I see you. You know who you are. Those who know that you are unique, you think uniquely, your expression is very unique and, and or unconventional, but we hide and pretend to be something or someone that we are not for the acceptance and approval of others who in many cases are pretty much doing the same thing. You know, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to pretend to live and be something or someone that we are not. You were uniquely made and shaped to be authentic and fearless for a divine reason. So why do you choose to suppress your uniqueness to fit the bill program and expectations of others? Like a bouquet of beautiful and colorful flowers, your unique beauty and expression is needed to ripple across this tapestry of life now more than ever. Don't fearfully and willfully consent to the suppression and sabotage of your life force and energy streams. Be free and empower the spirit or spirit of freedom for all in the process. All right, this is the big one. Number eight, take periodic breaks, purges or detoxification from social and mass media. Social media has become both a gift and a curse, and unfortunately, the curse angle has been and continues to be the most dominant and promoted of all in these challenging times. The oversaturation, promotion, liking, sharing, and engagement of content, articles, blogs, and commentary aimed to exploit another's pain, suffering, and misfortune is at an all-time high not good. Furthermore, content used and designed to generate fear, hate, sadness, hopelessness, salaciousness, hypersexuality, depression, gossip, divisiveness, warring, prejudice, anger, debauchery, violence, crime, goriness, murder, disinformation, propaganda, corruption, and mindlessness is almost inescapable because no matter where we go on social media and even on television, it's all there in our faces. And make no mistake about it, 
A constant diet of these things is influencing, infecting, and or affecting our emotional bodies, mood, mind, consciousness, and perception of reality. And it doesn't matter if we are consciously aware of this or not. And for these reasons, I highly recommend that we all periodically purge or detox ourselves by disengaging from social and mass media. By doing so, we will reduce exposure to hazardous slow and low vibratory rays and waves, reduce the odds of being emotionally and psychologically exploited and fed off of, Reduce the likelihood of consenting to a narrative, agenda, or bottom line that is not of your own will and or design. Reduce the odds of being subconsciously influenced to engage in the consumption of more of the said content and their corresponding energy streams. In the interim of purging or detoxing from social and mass media, we could increase the amount of quality time with loved ones. This includes your pets and your friends. You can create a space to be creative, innovative, and genuinely expressive. You can take long walks to a park or go to the gym, go hiking, some kind of form of physical exercise. And that can include dancing. Decompress by taking visits to a local sauna, steam room, or spa for a massage or pampering. You know you deserve it. By doing one or all of the latter, we will create and generate counter energy streams of harmonic and positive charges. This will help to bring greater balance into this collective sphere of consciousness. And we definitely cannot talk about social media or mass media without specifically talking about these cell phones. With all these cell phone towers all over the place and all these cell phone upgrades, our radiation levels are higher and more intense than ever before. Did you know? Federal scientists released partial findings from a $25 million animal study that tested the possibility of links between cancer and chronic exposure to the type of radiation emitted from cell phones and wireless devices. The findings, which chronicle an unprecedented number of rodents subjected to a lifetime of electromagnetic radiation starting in utero, present some of the strongest evidence to date that such exposure is associated with the formation of rare cancers in at least two cell types in the brains and hearts of rats. The results, which were posted on a pre-publication website run by Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, are poised to reignite controversy about how such everyday exposure might affect human health. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there is no controversy here. This is really all common sense. We are majority water. Water is a perfect conduit of electricity. We are electromagnetic. When you bring all of the two together, you cannot deny that one is going to impact the other in some kind of way. This is a clear connection with the explosion of cancer, brain tumors, and all kind of health issues that is happening all over the world. Now, remember in the past video where I highlighted the different kind of waves and rays that we are interfacing with and that we're giving off. We can't see, touch, taste, or feel it, but our electromagnetic makeup, our energy bodies, our emotional bodies can. And those of us who have that extra sense of perception, those of us who are sensitive, we can feel these things. Yeah, I'm one of those guys who's very sensitive to the radiation and the electromagnetic pulling that's going on with these cell phones. I don't put the phone near my head because I can feel the pulling and the uncomfortable magnetic pressures that's going on with it. I can feel the heat. I'm very sensitive to the heat. When I'm texting, I can feel the stinging effect of the energy exchange. It's not good. It feels as if 
energy is being pulled through the pan and fingertips as we type in text. Now I've asked people around me if they can feel or can they sense these things and they can't. My sister is the only other person who seems to be sensitive enough to pick up on these things. So by all of what I've shared with you, I am highly recommending the following. Turn off those cell phones. Remove the battery when not in use. Keep them away from your space as much as possible and leave them home more than often. I also recommend that if you can afford it, invest in a landline, the old school way of communicating. It wasn't that long ago when we communicated in this way. Now, I understand that we live in a very fast paced, high tech society and those of us with children or whatever the case may be, we should be sure to designate alternate emergency contacts should you or we not keep or have our cell phone on us at all times. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Please do not forget to like and share the content. Thank you guys so much for your time and measurable love. All